Welcome guys, it's your boy Jimmy Fee back once again with another conversational Bible companion video and as the title for this video suggests this is going to be a commentary and essentially this is part of a first part of a three part video about the subject of marriage so you've got this one which is a commentary the second one will be a video more of a short, kind of a short documentary uh, sort of unpacking what has happened to marriage and where it's likely to lead to and what are the possible solutions and then I've got a discussion uh, shortly after that with Dia basically getting her take a female's take on what's happened with marriage and as a Christian that you may decide to look into if you are going to choose a suitable marriage mate and what you're going to see guys across these three videos it will become very clear that we have a crisis at this moment in time and that the solution actually although it's clear it does require drastic measures on the part of each individual whether you're Christian or not so in actual fact if you're not a Christian you may want to look at becoming a Christian if you value having a lifelong marriage partner in your life but anyway before we uh, sort of unpack the, the conversation with Dia I've got an interesting just as is always the case I've got an interesting uh, interview here uh, it was a discussion between Myron and Fresh of uh, Fresh and Fit fame now some of you guys may know of these guys and have your opinions about them um, a lot of people regard them as being part of the whole RP or red pill movement and um, Andrew Wilson another uh, popular individual who's you know uh, been pretty vocal as a Christian who's sort of pushing back on the RP but at the same time um, understands a lot of the arguments for um, he, he sort of understands that, that the, um, the nature of our society has changed both men and women, women more specifically. In fact, you'll see him on podcasts like uh, the Whatever podcast actually challenging the worldly ideologies of, for example, modern women, feminists, and in particular, women who uh, have OnlyFans content. He's also uh, been seen as a debater on his own channel, The Crucible, and um, a couple of other, um, you know, debate channels. But this was an interesting discussion. So Fresh and Fit got Andrew Wilson into the studio. This would have raised eyebrows. This, I think this was the conversation that they wanted uh, to see. That's uh, I'm talking about the uh, the supporters of Fresh and Fit and supporters of of Andrew Wilson. In particular, it's about whether men should sleep with fifty women. Now, from time to time, I'm going to chime in on this um, conversation because, especially for you guys who are plus forty and you're already in marriages, what you're going to hear is going to shock you. But also, uh, for those who who are, who only hear. Uh, about a fresh and fit through TikTok short clips, you're going to hear their side of their argument unpacked in long form. So without any further ado, let's go for it. So for instance, I know you're infamous for this, yeah. right? But the have sex with 50 women yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Just, just so I make sure I don't get this position wrong, but I can give you like a counter example of what I'm saying. Yeah, sure. Can you lay your position on that out? Why? Yeah. Okay, so I, we would agree, right, that um, the dating marketplace has changed. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Women have changed, right? They think they're equal to you, the egalitarian thing that we talked about before. So since the dating marketplace has changed significantly and women have more sexual experience now than ever before because they think they're men and they can have sex and have relationships just like men etc and be promiscuous and not deal with the same ramifications um what guys have to do is kind of go in and understand how 
women operate in today's day and age. And I think a, a good way to do that, right? Obviously, there's a multitude of ways. But one way to do it is obviously to have experience so that you're not getting into a relationship or a situation with a woman and you're not aware of her nature and you don't know how to deal with it. I kind of like, I yeah. like to use the analogy all the time. If you know you got a boxing match, right, in five years, right, with a very good and skilled opponent, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to play video games the whole time? Or are you going to train and get ready for the biggest fight of your life, which I look at as marriage? Because so it you makes you worldly. Everything. Makes you worldly. Yes. Right? And yeah. It, yeah. I, 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 think, I think we don't disagree that that's true. Yeah. The Christian ethics pushback to this would of be... Of course. But wait, you want this is a requirement or something which is helpful to make you a high value man. Yeah. Well, this in turn would give this hoe value. <laughs> but I don't determine a guy's high valueness from um, having sex with a lot of girls. I think a man's a man being deemed as high status or high value is from his effort and his merit that he develops on his own, and then the sure. women are byproduct. But he has experience now, and experience is going to help him be high value, right? I wouldn't attribute him being because there's guys that are high value that don't get girls. Like I, I wouldn't I... into prescriptions that we start having troubles. So, for instance, I know you're infamous for this, yeah. right? But the have sex with fifty women yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Just, just so I make sure I don't get this position wrong, but I can give you like a counter example of what I'm saying. Yeah, sure. Can you lay your position on that out? Why? Yeah. Okay. So I, we would agree, right? That um, the dating marketplace has changed. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Women have changed, right? They think they're equal to you, the egalitarian thing that we talked about before. So since the dating marketplace has changed significantly and women have more sexual experience now than ever before because they think they're men and they can have sex and have relationships just like men, etc., and be promiscuous and not deal with the same ramifications, um, what guys have to do is kind of go in and understand how women operate in today's day and age and i think a, a good way to do that right obviously there's a multitude of ways but one way to do it is obviously to have experience so that you're not getting into a relationship or a situation with a woman and you're not aware of her nature and you don't know how to deal with it i kind of like i yeah. like to use the analogy all the time if you know you got a boxing match right in five years right with a very good and skilled opponent well, what are you going to do? Are you going to play video games the whole time? Or are you going to train and get ready for the biggest fight of your life, which I look at as marriage? Because so it makes you, you worldly. Everything. Makes you worldly. Yes. Right? And yeah. It, yeah. I, 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 think, I think we don't disagree that that's true. Yeah. The Christian ethics pushback to this would of be. Of course. But wait. You want. This is a requirement or something which is helpful to make you a high value man. Yeah. Well, this in turn would give this hoe value. <laughs> But I don't determine a guy's high valueness from um, having sex with a lot of girls. I think a man's a man being deemed as high status or high value is from his effort and his merit that he develops on his own, and then the sure. women are byproduct. But he has experience now, and experience is going to help him be high value, right? I wouldn't attribute him being because there's guys that are high value that don't get girls. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Well, I have to admit that's not the best. Uh, argument that I've heard Myron say with regards to his position on why uh, you know he believes that um, men need experience um, he, he'll go into it in more detail subsequently but I mean you can see the look on Andrew's face there he's rather confused in that <clears throat> so let, let, let's just roll back what he said so first of all he said that most women have experience now that is crucial and let me break it down like this uh, most women today in fact 90% are not virgins let's keep it all the way 1000 okay and most um, women have more sexual partners that now than the average men so if you look at say for example between 18 and 30 most women will have more sexual partners most average women will have more sexual partners than the average man now the reason for that is actually quite simple Myron and both Andrew both agreed that uh, women have changed and what has changed them feminism and also social media applications and so on and so forth they've basically given women what more options and also the therefore then the validity and the attention that they require so what's happened is now essentially 
is that if, if you know how these dating apps work, um, they effectively allow the average woman now to be available to 10 times more profiles than the average man. And that's a deliberate thing because if men were to go onto dating apps and quickly find a partner, the dating apps would lose money. Think about it. That's logical. The knock-on effect to society now is that it is giving women this, this um, illusion of choice. And that illusion of choice has boosted their own self-esteem now. So, to the point now basically where the average woman simply doesn't find the average man um, attractive. She, she just doesn't. However, she's still getting attention then, therefore then, from a large pool of men. The average uh, man, essentially, the figures are now out between 18 and 30, struggle to get attention. Whereas a woman from age of 18 onwards, especially between 18 and 24, that's, she's in a peak of her attractiveness, she will get as much attention as possible. And with the aid of independence, uh, promoting the promotion of independence to women and femininity, they've been told that they should go out and use all the options to experiment sexually, to experiment with different partners before you get tied t down, before you are uh, t controlled by a man. So think about it right there. Now the other thing that's really, really important to understand is that today most women require good sexual chemistry first before they will even consider being with a man. So if you think about it, if women from the age of say 18 to 25 are having more sex than men, then essentially then you've got a situation where a virgin, a man who's a virgin at 25 is simply not going to be attractive to a woman who's 25 because women today, they don't want to know if they've, w women simply don't want to sleep with a, a man who's a virgin. Let's keep it real. They just don't. So you, can you understand now that that puts, totally changes the uh, intersexual dynamics, totally changes it. It means therefore then that a, a man must have sexual experience because if he can't satisfy a woman who's got more sexual experience than, than, than him, she's not even going to consider him for a relationship. Now that might be really difficult for you to understand if you're 40 and over, but this is the reality of the dating game. They've gamified human relationships. Hence why someone like Myron actually isn't a radical after all but is it the best solution is it really truly the best solution to say well okay fair enough if you want to be experienced enough for women to take you seriously then you must sleep with x amount of women and listen you've only got to go and have a listen to the um discussions that andrew wilson has <laughs> on for example podcasts like the whatever podcast or the discussions he's had with the OnlyFans pornographer, lawyer, um, uh, uh, I can't, can't remember her name now, it's probably not a good idea to mention her name, I don't wanna give her any more advertisement, but you can see now that, 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 that there is literally a growing uh, percentage of women and men who truly believe that promiscuity and degeneracy, he calls it, um, is the way forward you've got to be able to find yourself so the average woman she's going to unfortunately rack up sexual partners but because she is going to have access to more sexual partners than her male counterpart it means therefore then that the the if you're going to play the game the, the, a man in that age group is going to have to uh more is he's, he's got to make sure he's more sexually experienced than the female counterparts. But anyway, let us move this on. But they don't get girls. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they don't go out enough, maybe they don't care to. Oh, right, right, but yeah, they're yeah. more likely to get them if they want them, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah they're in a better position. Yeah. Because it's a byproduct, but 
my thing is your your value as a man is not attributed to the amount of girls that you have sex with. I just think it's a be- it allows you to be a better test of care. You're you're be- you're better able to assess the character of women when you've dealt with them before, so that you don't get finessed out of the value that you created. But wouldn't the entailment of that be that you're high value? Like the entailment of I have X amount of experience that helps me with my value. Maybe I, I just don't attribute a, a, like a man's sexual experience to him being high value. I think it helps him with assessing um, a partner. Pr- a partner. Mm-hmm. See, I, I, look, I kind of think that they've kind of digressed off of the key issue here. Let's just forget about this notion of high value. Let's just look at the average man in general. Like I said earlier, for the average man who wants to procure a relationship with the average woman, that's whether he's Christian or not. He's going to be faced with two problems. One, he can't get a date because most women simply, uh, they, you know, they've, if you like, they've been um, conditioned now to find most men unattractive. Then for the Christian man, he's also got an additional problem. If he wants to be celibate, well, if he wants to be yet yeah, celibate, no sex before marriage, then for most women, upwards of 95%, you simply wouldn't even get him through the door. Because first and foremost, women have been conditioned to value sexual chemistry in a relationship as one of the key things. If you look at the divorce rates, and and I'll be discussing that um, with Dia and unpacking that in videos to come, right? Um, One of the key reasons for divorces is women who are bored and bored sexually. And the reason for that is another elephant in the room. You see, we tend to believe that um, uh, pornography is a male problem. It's not. The elephant in the room is, it's actually a worse problem for women because two things, they get bored very, very quickly with the partner they're with. And two, for younger women, it leads them to more promiscuous behavior, polyamory, or they simply just want to get into the sex industry and they'll be handsomely rewarded for it. There's a reason why OnlyFans content now is has basically just skyrocketed it's because women are earning a huge amount of money from it so what do you do then as a christian man and this is where andrew has been fighting to try and get some reasonable solutions across so let's get back to uh his let's get back to the interview women are a byproduct of his success okay so he so he is successful yeah it's easier for him to get these checks Yes, right. and I think if he's going to go ahead and partake in women, he should have some experience, is what I think. Gotcha. Especially when he's higher value and he has a lot to lose. But I'm not going to sit, if, so if I take two guys, right? Mm-hmm. One guy is making, you know, one guy is wildly successful, etc., and another guy is wildly successful. One has a partner count of a thousand, the other one has a partner count of zero. To me, they're still both high value. Just one chose to use his value to attract way more women than another. But would you make it a prescription then? Would you tell men, you should do this? It's good for you to do this. I think if you're gonna go and be marriage-minded and try to find a girl to take seriously, you should have some experience. Then that has to add to the value. I don't think so, man. I don't, because, I don't because see you're high how. Value. If you're saying you're high if value, we want this thing, yeah. and this thing is to get married yeah. to a high-value woman, right? To somebody who you consider to be virtuous and good mm-hmm. and this type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. If you're saying that having sex with a multitude of partners is then going to up your chances of being able to do this thing to accomplish this thing then it it i don't see how it's not attributing to the value i i i completely uh, a man's value and him having so i they're independent to me okay. I, I look at like you can be a virgin as a guy and still be a high value dude yep. is how i look at it mm-hmm. i think the women are just a byproduct of your value whilst i totally favor andrew's position let's look at the practicalities that okay on on the conversational Bible companion we look at the practicalities of the situation that we're in okay let's just look at what Andrew attributes as a high-value woman it's a woman who is not promiscuous it's a woman who does not have a high body count and it's a woman who's a Christian okay so what are the issues there 
Well, why don't we have a look at the success rate of marriages in the church? Are Christian women rushing to marry Christian men? And the answer to that is no. Most Christian women find Christian men unattractive and boring. As a Christian man myself, okay, and you know, look, I haven't done too badly, I've got to say, but one of the common criticisms that I've, I've, uh, I hear from Christian women is, oh, Christian men are boring. And that's because I realized, well, hang on a second, their Christian women are attracted to the same sexual attributes in men as their non-Christian counterparts. There's, in actual fact, there's no real difference between a Christian woman and a non-Christian woman. Most Christian women also, if you go, if you go to churches today, let's keep it all the way 1,000, less than 1% of them are actual virgins. Let's, let, let's keep it real. Most of them are actual born again Christians. Um, you've got the situation of the OnlyFans um, pornographer uh, who actually Andrew debated a, f a few months back. I mean, it, it, I, think, I think her name's Layla. Unbelievable character who recently now, after admitting that she's, you know, had, you know, well, she's been in, she's been involved in all sorts of sexual escapades I, I think she's if correct me if i'm wrong but she didn't necessarily say she had a high body count but she you know she's been involved in pornography but now she's turned to christ look um it could be argued that for the for the christian man who's decided that he's not going to have sex until marriage um unfortunately he hasn't got as too many women to pick from in church. Um, the reason for that is most of these women will not find him attractive. I mean, and that's a sad fact. And it, again, not to pick on women, but this is to look at, and this is why the video I've got coming up is going to be really important. This is to point out that, basically speaking, the sexual proclivities of the woman has changed beyond recognition. The wiring, psychological, mental, sexual wiring has changed. We're not dealing with the same being as say our great grandfathers dealt with say 70, 80 years ago. It's just not the same. That, that woman back then, she was quite happy, or was well, she expected her man to be a virgin. She was expected to be a virgin and as far as sexual pleasure well I mean that was something that they worked out after they were married during the marriage process and what have you else today's woman will tell you her biggest nightmare is being married to a man who cannot please her sexually did this in fairness in this discussion that was the elephant in the room that wasn't discussed but it is the thing that sat I believe in the back of their minds, both Andrew and uh, Fresh and Fit. So if you're prescribing, mm -hmm. have sex with 50 women, mm -hmm. okay, um, this is your prescription because in the prescription has value, then whatever the hoes are that they're sleeping with, that's an entailment. So the hoe has to have value. Not necessarily. Well, you could call them like pawns. I mean, they would be necessary for you to s sleep with 50 women, right? No, because, not necessarily because what ends up happening, because a lot of the girls, let's be honest, they'll be bimbos, stupid chicks, idiots, mm -hmm. morons, lower, lower status women. But maybe. necessary for you to sleep with. Look, look I've got to say, look, they, <laughs> um, I, I'm not 100% comfortable with uh, describing the women that... Uh, the average man is likely to encounter. What I will say, however, and you know, they they would concur, is this: if it is true, and I'm pretty sure it is, if it is true that the average woman, with all the attention she can get from her Instagram, from the dating apps, from and the validation that that society gives her for even the most anti-christian behavior the average man essentially then one first of all he's got to get a date that is going to be extremely difficult because the average woman today she's not really looking for the content of the character 
even if you slap on a Christian woman, they're going to want to know, are you good? First of all, are you good looking? Are you a particular height? And I don't care what women say, Look, have a look at what they do. Walk down your local high street, women between the ages of 18 to 45, have a look at the, the men that they're paired with today. And I think that what you'll see pretty much fits in with how they've been conditioned to behave, okay? So, good looking man, particular height, and so on and so forth. That's a pre So, the chances are that she's going to be subject to the rules of the new dating game. In other words, the average man will get in contact with someone, send text messages, will not get a reply. Or she, she, she will simply play the field. Why? Because she's, she's got 10 other people that are also fighting for her attention. The days when a woman would be focused purely on one guy and one guy only, that's gone. And I think that's what these guys, especially uh, Myron, is talking about. That a virgin man going in totally naive into the current dating pool, trying to play the dating game with no experience or sexual experience, is basically going to, well, he's going to be taken for a fool. If his money isn't going to be taken for him, from him, um, he'll end up spending time and energy with a woman who um, will probably settle for someone that she's very very much attracted to but probably isn't good for her and that's the same for whether they're Christian or non-Christian now you might not like that and before passing judgment ask yourself these two questions one are you between the ages of 18 and between the ages of 18 and 35 have you dated recently if not then you're you're basically uh, I would say somewhat displaced from reality you're a long way removed from the reality of what's happening today and again this isn't a, uh, to say that uh, this is a fault of women or a fault of men. No, no, no. This is a fault of very careful conditioning by our enemies. Because if you think about it, once you took away God from the equations, once you took away the need to have, you know, marriage as the forefront before any sexual relationships, once you took away the need for someone to have the content of character, someone who was godly, someone who was respectable, where love and commitment, long-term commitment through thick and thin. Once you took those things away and you replaced it with uh, attraction, sexual attraction, money, clout, then uh, uh, quite frankly, you've got a situation that we've got today where, well, the average marriage, if you can get to a marriage, is now seven years. That's the reality of what we've got. I mean, like if, you can can get that by, if you can get by, right, with less, mm -hmm. sure. But I think a decent barometer is 50 in today's day and age mm -hmm. because it will put you in a position where you'll experience a multitude of different girls with different personality types, different behaviors, different yeah. red flags, different green flags, etc. So you'll have a general rubric of like, okay, these girls that go to the club all the time probably aren't good. I've dealt with like three of them now. Okay, these girls that are go to soror that are from a sorority and yeah, maybe not so good. So like you kind of have an idea of like, all right, this is you, you get a generality of things. Well, so to like the olive branch, yeah, uh, the meeting you halfway. I would not say for a second that the more sexual experience you have and the more worldly you are, that you're not going to have experience in dealing with worldly women. There's no doubt, yeah. or women who aren't worldly, yeah. you're still going to have experience in both. All I'm saying is that I think it's a logical entailment to say. I'm going to prescribe that you go sleep with, let's say, let's just say it's 20, right? It doesn't even have to be 50, okay. 15, 10, 5. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You and I both know the types of women those guys are going to be sleeping with are going to be easy women, and they're going to be low-value women. They're basically going to be hoes. So if that's the case, that the hoes are who they're going to be sleeping with, then we have now entailed that hoes have to have value or else you couldn't sleep with them. <laughs> Mm. I think it's kind of a. I mean, I think all women have inherent value, though, even hoes. Yeah, because that's because what because 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 like all, all females have some type of value because like because they just they're women. Mm -hmm. But as far as like 
attributing that value to yourself and making taking her seriously, I think that's a different thing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, look, once again, I think that both parties have kind of missed a key, a more important point here is this. Um, let's just say, for example, that uh, you decide as an average man, forget this high value man, forget going for a high value woman, let's keep it one for, if you're an average man and you want to have a relationship, um, then the chances of actually having a relationship now are extremely difficult if you've got these prerequisites, these you know pretty out there prerequisites for today's date, which is one, she's got to be Christian, two, um, she's got to have a low body count, three, she's got to actually find you attractive, she's got to be happy with not engaging in a sexual relationship with you until marriage. Now. Andrew, as a Christian, would have to admit that's almost impossible. Women actually prefer men, and I'm not speaking in generalities, but women prefer men who have had more than one sexual partner because I don't, maybe it makes them more manly. Like they're experienced, they know what to do, they know what not to do, they're, they could take the lead. Who has been with 1,500 women by age 40, that's one option or zero women yeah. by age 40. If you were a single hypothetical, would you pick the 1500, he's honest, or the zero guy? 1500. You would. Please elaborate why. I want a man that knows how to lay it down. Like I wouldn't want to be with somebody again that's a virgin or hasn't had sex all that much because then I feel like I'm taking the masculine role and I don't think women like that. So I think there's a dichotomy there. Um. I was talking to this, because um, in Israel I met a lot of guys who were saving themselves uh, for marriage, right? The Orthodox community. Religion, yeah. yeah. Orthodox. And, yeah, yes. and so I'd have these conversations with, uh, I remember having a conversation with a guy who I was, I was interested in, but he was not going to have any kind of physical relationship with yeah. me. So we were having this argument where he was like, don't you think it's so special that when you choose one person, then you are there with them for life? And I was like, I actually think it's more special to have tried a lot of things and pick one person because you know what's out there. You have the information. Clap it up. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's a great answer. Clap it up. Ah. I just think in terms, going back again to the sexual chemistry part, it's important for someone like me, and I said it's not for everybody because if you're holding off until marriage or whatever, then that's totally like your own thing. But for me, I do want to make sure that I am sexually compatible with my partner before getting married. If you're out there and you disagree with me, if you're a female, and you're out there, and you disagree with me. I'd love to hear your uh, your uh, your point of view. Stick it in the comments below, and um, we'll go through it. Hopefully, if we get your comments before I had the interview with Dia, um, you know, we can go through with it. But so that's the key. That that's what I see there. That the real issue is for the average man finding that rare woman who doesn't mind having a relationship with a virgin. That's the key. Or a woman who's had a low body count, who doesn't mind a man with a lower body count, or maybe slightly higher, but I mean, you know, th th that's the issue. That's the real issue there. And I think that in today's society, whether you're in Australia, whether you're in the UK, whether you're in the US, Europe, you're going to struggle. You're literally going to struggle. The women who are very promiscuous and okay. they see sex as Fair. they see sex as a tool mm -hmm. or as a utility or as a manipulation device or things like this, uh, instantly uh, the the Christian ethicist is going to look at this and say this is completely sinful, needs to stop. You're totally valueless, yeah, right? But, your humanity is still very valuable. You as a person is still very valuable. Your salvation is really important to us. Yeah. But your sin, your this type of sinful behavior from our perspective is completely degradating to society, and we need to stop it by almost any means necessary because what ends up happening, it's like an enclosed system. What ends up happening from my perspective is that degeneracy leads to degeneracy leads to degeneracy leads to degeneracy. Okay. And there never seems to be a pull back. Mm -hmm. It's always a push forward. I mean, we're talking about shit now. You guys couldn't even imagine 
what we're talking about now with like transferries and all this different stuff. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. You couldn't have even fathomed <laughs> that. that. You call that's a that's a new one. Now, could you have even fathomed that this would that we would be talking about child genital mutilation? I mean. It, who yeah. would ever have envisioned yeah. that this would be the world we live in? Yeah, it's crazy. But if you back it up, if you look at kind of the slippery slope argument, quote unquote, mm. this started with an LGBTQ push for equality, mm. and the next, and once they have it, you have nothing else to complain about. You have to move the goalposts to the next victim group. Yeah. Then yeah. you have to move the goalposts to the next victim group. Yeah. And it becomes more and more and more absurd, and that's why you'll see the pendulum eventually is going to swing back the other way by necessity. If mm-hmm. if I may, we're not arguing on a, I want to say, religious standpoint. It's more of a logical standpoint. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's be honest here. You yourself, if you weren't versed in women, you can choose for yourself the wife you have today, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think we'll just, we'll leave it there for that particular uh, discussion. I'm sure you'll find that was quite interesting. But, you know, that last point there it's sort of reiterated what I was saying that, if you are a um, Christian dude, <laughs> I mean, uh, and expecting to find a woman who is also a virgin. I mean, look, the, the, even the narrative out there is most women find this whole concept of a man want, not wanting uh, a, a partner who's had sexual partners previously or you know, sex outside marriage, they find that to be really creepy and they assume that the reason for that is because um, that guy's controlling. So, you know, just, just, just to reiterate how different the intersexual dynamics has changed for this particular generation. But anyway, as I say, we'll leave it there. Um, once again, I really would love to read your comments. To add your comments in the comment section. And what I'll do is I'll probably be picking out the key comments when I have my discussion with Dia. And do look out for the video, um, Is Marriage Dead? Which will be coming up uh, possibly what within 24 hours of this particular video. Until then, do stay safe. Remember, the answers to all our questions rest in the Bible. From me, Jimothy, it's a goodbye. Until the next time we meet, take care. As Christians, the comments in this video do not align with the godly principles of strict chastity outside of marriage. Two scriptures come to mind from the Bible. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, 5. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Matthew 5, 28. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Whilst the RP community makes a compelling secular case for why it's almost impossible to engage in a relationship outside of marriage without sex, it is counterproductive for both men and women to seek dozens of premarital exploits before marriage. Perhaps a prescription for the modern man who seeks a lifelong partner is to delay sexual gratification for at least between 30 and 60 days. This establishes whether there is a genuine bond and foundation for a lasting relationship. The absence of a connection will become pretty apparent within the first few weeks, allowing both parties the ability to walk away before a wasteful sexual encounter. Again, I'd like to point out this will only appeal to those who are intent on establishing a lasting relationship and will not at all suit those seeking short-term sexual gratification. This is at least an attainable option, but ultimately we should take heed of the following scripture. Hebrews 13.4 Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. We'd love to read your thoughts in the comments section. Is this a workable solution for you? If not, why not?